Back in 1977, the Americans launched a project called Voyager. Within this framework, two probes, Voyager 1 and 2, were sent into space. It seems to be a rather banal scenario, but the results of this endeavor exceeded all expectations. Have you ever heard the sounds of space? Of course, you may argue that the vacuum is absolutely mute. After all, sound waves can only propagate in the presence of molecules that transmit vibrations. However, thanks to computer transformation, we can hear the booming rumble of Venus. The monotonous howl of Jupiter and the pulsating cacophony of Mercury. These are the voices of the planets, but what does the echo of deep space sound like? Apart from the voyagers, only the pioneers have been there, but communication with them has long since ended. A little later, we'll give you the opportunity to hear the frightening sounds of the universe. But for now, we'll briefly describe the most interesting stages of the mission of the two probes, which has not yet been completed. Hello. Highly autonomous vehicles were created to study the outer planets of the solar system, with the subsequent flight of the probes going beyond the heliosphere. When organizing the mission, past mistakes were taken into account. For example, Pioneer 10 stopped responding, probably because its source of radioisotope power had been depleted. By the way, the device is now supposedly heading towards Aldebaran, and this journey will last about two million years. Anyway, the issue of power supply for the probes had to be given special attention. Engineers equipped the Voyagers with their own plutonium-238 thermoelectric generators and rocket engines, as well as many computers and other useful equipment, such as spectrometers, cameras, plasma systems, and so on. Despite problems, the devices managed to successfully explore the outer planets of the solar system and then proceed into the depths of outer space. Everyone knows that the boundaries of the possessions of our parent star do not immediately end after Neptune. The Voyagers carry on their sides golden plates with recordings of the sounds of the Earth, such as volcanic eruptions, wind noise, and the crying of a child, still had a very long and and difficult way to go. Fortunately, the technical capabilities of both Voyagers will allow us to contact them until the year 2030. What is the task facing the probes at the moment? The main purpose of the devices is to study the transition region between the plasma located in the solar system and regions in interstellar space. A few years ago, the devices crossed the first boundary that separates our planets from the cold darkness of space, the heliospheric shockwave. Voyager 1 did this in December 2004, and Voyager 2 did it in August 2007. The boundary of the shockwave is the region located inside the heliosphere. This is where the solar wind breaks sharply to sonic speeds as it collides with interstellar matter. It's worth noting that the solar wind flies at a speed of about 1 million kilometers an hour for the first 10 billion kilometers, and only the presence of cosmic particles can slow down this voyage. After this boundary, the devices waited for the next boundary, the heliopause, which, as scientists suggest, they should reach 10 years after crossing the boundaries of the shockwave. Therefore, most likely, this event has already taken place. The heliopause can be compared to an airlock, where the pressure is equalized when astronauts go out into outer space. It's here that the speed parameters of the solar wind and the interstellar medium acquire acceptable values, and partial mutual assimilation of matter occurs. In general, disputes have been going on about the nature of the heliopause for several years. It was believed that it was located near the orbit of Jupiter, but Voyager 2 dispelled this myth. Since no one knew where the boundary was located, astronomers doubted that the probe would cross it before it stopped working. But in 2018, Voyager 2 officially managed to cross the heliopause before being stopped. 
It turned out that it's 120 times farther than the Earth from the Sun. Thanks to the measurements that both probes periodically sent, it was possible to find out that the heliosphere is quite elastic. During periods of solar activity, it inflates like a balloon and then returns to its previous size. What other discovery did Voyager 2 make? In 2020, its plasma sensors discovered one inexplicable oddity. The further the probe moves away from the Sun, the more the density of interstellar space increases. Perhaps particles slow down sharply as they approach the heliopause and pile up on top of each other like a snowdrift. There is another theory. It references the collision of the interstellar magnetic field with the heliosphere, which creates a kind of corridor between the heliopause and the rest of space. By the way, according to measurements, interstellar magnetism, although 64,000 times weaker than the Earth's, at only 7 microgauss, it's still capable of exerting a certain pressure on the heliosphere. Be that as it may, the question of the increased density of matter remains open, and scientists have yet to find an answer. Is there a danger of the destruction of both voyagers under such conditions? Theoretically, yes. According to popular hypotheses, between the bow shockwave, the conditional Rubicon during the transition to the absolute vacuum of space, there's another area filled with hot hydrogen. Scientists have nicknamed it the hydrogen wall. The hypothetical bow shock is located at a distance of 230 astronomical units from the Sun, and the Voyagers still have to overcome it. Although it should be said that many astronomers consider this imaginary boundary an idle fiction. But back to the Voyagers. Where are they now? Back in 2012, the first probe reached the boundaries of the interstellar medium. Its sensors registered an increase in the number of galactic rays, and later a sharp decrease in solar wind particles. These data provide strong evidence that the probe is finally leaving the heliosphere. It was in this place that the device recorded a strange sound, a monotonous hum interrupted by a piercing whistle. It's not clear what exactly causes these gloomy moans, but goosebumps are definitely par for the course. Some astronomers argue that the sharp whistle is probably caused by regular solar flares that reach the outskirts of the heliosphere. Voyager 1 overheard all of this in passing, since the journey of the device is far from over. In 40,000 years, it will fly past the red dwarf Gliese 445, slowly approaching the star, and will continue to wander forever through our galaxy. But what about Voyager 2? Is it also soaring somewhere through the darkness of space? As already mentioned, 14 years ago, the device successfully crossed the heliospheric shockwave and passed the heliopause. Thanks to the data obtained from Voyager 2, it was possible to prove that the heliosphere is not a perfect sphere. On the contrary, it's a flattened oval with northern boundaries distant from the Sun. Were any oddities recorded in the information transmitted by the apparatus? Yes, there was one discrepancy. Scientists expected that at the edge of the shockwave, the temperature should be much higher than inside the heliosphere, but that wasn't found. Rather, it was hot, but not as hot as astronomers expected. Question: Where did the discrepancies come from and where did the excess energy disappear to? So far, this remains unanswered. The second Voyager is now about 20 billion miles from Earth and is heading steadily towards the Oort cloud. It will reach the cloud three centuries from now, and to fly through this spherical region, it will take at least 30,000 years. Unfortunately, we'll never know about this. The half-life of plutonium is around 90 years, and even now the energy resources of the devices have decreased to 40% or less. Both devices, launched with a difference of just around a month, are now hundreds of astronomical units from the Sun and are not going to stop. 
They're waiting for their future meetings with stars, their planets, lonely comets, and flocks of asteroids. Thanks to the probes, we now know how the emptiness of the macrocosm sounds and are empirically convinced of the presence of the heliosphere, which protects our planetary system from the aggressive effects of galactic rays. Subscribe to the Hubble channel and learn about everything that happens in the universe. If you agree with the great scientist, be sure to like and subscribe. The more likes we have, the more interesting content the Hubble channel produces, as it has already happened by tradition. If under this video we managed to collect 1,000 thumbs up, a new, very, very exciting video will be released immediately. The main thing to remember is, educational videos promote the development of intelligence, and don't you forget it.